kind of corporate moral way. America is not you America. Can't, Detroit Lions, I feel, have a saying: "It's not over till we lose." Would you want the people running your health care, the people who invented the iPhone and the iPad, or the people who run the DMV? Well, I would love Apple to uh, exactly. Let yes. me make a bold statement. Yes, you are no liberal. I'm you liberal are. When it comes you, to let me finish. A lot. You of are a conservative. You just don't know it yet. Welcome to the show. I am that Chris Gore. This is Pod Crash. This is the show where you get to hear me as a guest each week on a different podcast. You get to discover new shows. I get to talk about a variety of topics. This week, we're talking politics on the Ari David Show. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking politics. This is going to be boring. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you. No, it's not. It's not going to be boring. It's actually a lively, fun discussion. Why? Because Ari David is a comedian. Uh, he's a political activist, a native Cal- Southern Californian. He's an actor, social commentator. Uh, also, he ran for Congress. And uh, he also is the host of the Ari David Show, which is it's it's you know on his Twitter profile it says he's not right wing but he is right or some I'm paraphrasing from what I remember about his Twitter, but um, he is someone that has some very interesting political views because he's while he may lean right wing he's also an avid pot smoker. An avid pot. That's not something you normally hear. It's normally uh, people, uh, you know, on, on, on the liberal side of the fence tend to be the uh, people that indulge in, uh, in, uh, in marijuana. Uh, Ari David, very open about uh, his uh, marijuana use and uh, also very open about his political views. Uh, we will get to that in a moment. Uh, I, I should mention that Podcrash is a proud member of the the Sideshow Network, which is a network of podcasts that includes shows like uh, Man School with Caleb Bacon. Uh, actually, this show, the Ari David Show, is actually part of the Sideshow Network. Um, uh, the, Tommy Chong has a show. So uh, you can get more if you go to sideshownetwork.tv. Quick story, which actually ties into uh, my political views. I, I had uh, the honor once to meet uh, the great comedian George Carlin. I was... Uh, I was staying at a hotel in New York, and I was doing press for uh, the show uh, that I did for IFC for a couple of seasons. Staying at this great hotel, it was awesome. And um, they had this they had this computer area where you know I'd, it was the only place you could get online, right? Um, I, I don't think at the time uh, that this hotel had Wi-Fi, but they did have a computer have a computer that you could use. And I was down there every morning checking my email. Who's there but George Carlin? I try to pretend that I didn't recognize him, and I think it did really well. I did not – I didn't give away that I – I knew that it was him. He knew that I knew that, that it was him. But I just tried to be respectful. And anytime I've ever met any big celebrity, someone that I really admire, I just try to not bother them. I try to think like, hey, they're a normal person. Treat them like a normal person. Don't freak out or whatever. Um, the best part was he was having trouble logging onto the computer. He was having some issues. And I got to be the IT guy. I got to walk over and, and help George Carlin uh, fix this issue so that he could get online and do whatever it is he needed to do. And then it was just normal chit-chat. It wasn't I, – I, I feel like I just didn't want to get into his business. So I get – you know, I, I wasn't nervous. I just felt like I just didn't want to bother the man. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was great. He was friendly to everybody. Um, no attitude, no, uh, I don't know. That's, it's funny. I feel like the, the, the bigger celebrities I meet, the, the, the more, uh, the more you find that they're, they're actually, uh, just normal people. Um, so that was awesome. But this ties into, I saw something recently, um, and I listened to George Carlin albums growing up. I mean, uh, it was just, just one of those, uh, I mean, like the, you know, the seven words you can't say on TV, just from everything, like so many bits that he did, uh, very outspoken about religion. But I ran across this just recently, um, and it's weird because here we're talking about politics on the show. This, is, this sort of encompasses George Carlin's political views, which is weird because this is exactly how I've thought my whole life. I don't know why I'm only recently uh, run across this, but um, somebody posted this. I just, I just want to read the quote uh, for you real quick. It says, uh, I don't like ass kissers, flag wavers, or team players. I like people who buck the system individualists. I often warn people, somewhere along the way, someone is going to tell you there is no I in team. 
what you should tell them is, maybe not, but there is an eye in independence, individuality, and integrity. Avoid teams at all costs. Keep your circle small. Never join a group that has a name. If they say, we're the so-and-sos, take a walk. Ask if somehow you must join, if it's unavoidable, such as a union or a trade association, uh, go ahead and join, but don't participate. It will be your death. And if they tell you you're not a good, you're not a team player, congratulate them on being observant. I hate to say, but this really encompasses my political views. Uh, I, 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 well, I, you know, I, I could say that uh, I, I lean, uh, uh, you know, very liberal. I have other views that um, that actually are in complete contrast to that. So, uh, I, I, maybe maybe I overthink some of the issues, and then some of the issues I think, well, this is where I stand personally. But um, I think that other, so so for me, I have a, a certain set of values that are just only for me. But then I think, as pertaining to everyone else. I, 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 it's a completely different view. This actually we get into on uh, the Ari David show. And, and it, it was funny because I come in thinking like, well, I'm a liberal, uh, mostly Democrat. Uh, but it was, it was strange once we got into certain slivers of specific discussion, how I could see that like, well, I was probably lean uh, a, a little bit more libertarian. Because I have, I have voted all over the place in terms of just, uh, I just want to find the right guy to act that actually will represent my views. I don't think there really is anybody, frankly. I don't think there really is a party uh, for me. I mean, uh, I, you know, uh, it's, it's, I think it's just sort of an insane uh, political environment that we're, that we're living in now uh, that's just, you know, crazy. Um, but we, just, just to tell you a little bit about it, I, I, I came up to actually just be on an episode of Ari David's show. So I'm going to be on his show. He ends up putting me on four episodes of his show. So what you're going to hear are basically uh, highlights um, from the first three episodes. So you're going to hear like a good chunk of it. And it's, it's a very um, even conversation, which is good because I, I, uh, so, sometimes I feel like I uh, dominate a bit too much. So you're going to get a really good taste of what Ari is like. And you're going to get a taste of, of a very, I hope you find, interesting conversation about politics. Uh, and also um, that involves a little bit of discovery on both of our parts, you know, learning not only about each other's views, but also um, uh, different ways of looking at an issue. So he'll get a chance to talk about something. I'll talk about something. We go back and forth. Uh, so there are four episodes I was on, um, but, but you're only going to hear three, uh, part of, mostly part of three, because uh, I just think it will be a little too much. A little too much. And I, I just like that uh, uh, was able to uh, get into a more even discussion. If you, if you want to show your support for Pod Crash, join Dollar Shave Club. We all shave. I like to shave my face. I shave other places, too. Women shave. This is for everybody. Well, this will save you money and time by joining Dollar Shave Club. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chris. Simple, high-quality razors, guaranteed, sent to you on schedule every month to get a new pack. I am signing up for this because that's a way that I can actually support my own show, which in a way supports me. So go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chris. Okay, so I know you've heard that plug before, but please, whatever you can do to uh, support the show is helpful. Oh, and a, a quick reminder about this. I am going to be at the Phoenix Comic Con Memorial Day weekend, May 23rd through 26th. It's, I'm going to be there the whole weekend. Be doing Pod Crash Live on Saturday, May 25th at 7.30 p.m. Very special. It's my second time back uh, to Phoenix Comic Con. Get more information at phoenixcomiccon.com or go to facebook.com slash podcrash. Okay, now that we got those plugs out of the way, let's get into let's get right into the show because there's a lot that I have to play for you, um, and I'm not going to be commentating in between. Uh, I should also say that this uh, these episodes were recorded uh, before the bombings in Boston, so um, I'm sure we would have gotten into that. Uh, it's 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 a it's a more general political discussion, um, so uh, so I, I think it's I think it's worth uh, you know listening to now, uh, and and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the show. So here it is, The Ari David Show. Politics Raw. One of the things that I'm about is teaching people about conservatism and understanding that conservatism embodies a lot of libertarianness in it because to yes, be Yes, but why don't they act that way? This is what bothers because me. Because like most people it, who are Republicans don't know what conservatism is and also – they're allowed to act that way because the conservative is all about the individual. Mm -hmm. So I have tolerance, if not embracedness, 
for someone like, say, Rush Limbaugh, who has views that I might not agree with on everything, but that's cool. But I also have an embracing or if not tolerance for a Thomas Sowell or a Milton Friedman who believes in more libertarian things than, than or Rush a Bill Maher or a uh, – well, <laughs> Mar is, is a different situation because right, right. As, as a conservative who believes in the individual, I think people should be able to self-label themselves whatever they want. But there's an old saying, you can't always smell yourself, so your own label for what you think you are is not necessarily accurate. What people see in you is usually more accurate than what you see or want to see in yourself. Oh my so God, someone, that's, that's a really brilliant statement if I could just stop you and just to point that out, that that is, that is brilliant. Well, thank you. And I hope you use that as an excerpt on the, the podcast. Oh, no, no, we yeah. definitely will. Yeah. But the point being is uh, Marr technically mm-hmm. is much more of a, a, a modern liberal big government kind of almost authoritarian kind of person who um, doesn't have tolerance for dissenting opinion lest he flames it. You know, how, how he'll attack people who are, say, religious or something like that. Um, a conservative – thinks of uh, Bill Maher, hey, fine, call yourself what you want. You might not be that, but you can at least think what you want, but you might not be accurate. So conservatives, because our focus is on individualism and very few individuals think exactly congruently what other individuals think, you have this wide ranging of opinion and thus it's difficult to encompass it with one message where all the talking points are the same and the messaging but is cohesive. Is it the First of all, I, I really thought it was going to come on this show and you and I were going to butt heads in a fun, respectful way. But I feel I'm agreeing. Oh, you so will, much. will you, Pinko? We, we will ev- exactly. We will eventually. But uh, but uh, you know, I really feel that the the current Republican Party has been taken over by mental midgets. Well, who's leading it? I mean, exactly. Who's, who's leading it? That's no, the no, question. I'm asking Carl you. Carl Rove. Carl Rove. Right. Uh, it's a rhetorical question. I'm not asking yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, I'm yeah. the expert, right? Right. Right. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you. Uh, Carl Rove, John Boehner, Eric Cantor, Kevin McCarthy. Morons, frigging morons! Yeah, they are morons. Who are who are the people they're trying to keep from leading it? The great Colonel Allen West, mm-hmm. the great Sarah Palin. Okay, um, Colin the, Powell. The great uh, no, not Colin Powell. Uh, that's not a conservative. I'm talking about the conservative movement, not the Republican Party here. Right. It, um, uh, although these people are Republicans, uh, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, the great Mark Levin, uh, to Dr. Tom Sowell, Larry Elder, Dennis Prager. These are brilliant philosophers. These are brilliant thinkers who some believe in, in libertarian – Uh, more leaning values like say a Larry Elder who thinks uh, gay marriage and marijuana should be legalized under the rubric that these are states' rights and individual issues and others don't because they believe that there are certain moral issues for the greater good of society where certain things get restricted. I feel like I feel like those things are going to. I mean, we need to decriminalize also uh, marijuana. It's, 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 I would and, go and, further and, and say we have to decriminalize all drugs because the war on drugs is a total absolutely. failure and it's a big government solution. Absolutely, and it, the real conservative believes that anything that's top down, big government opposed on people is a form of tyranny is wrong. Well, it's 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 just interesting because it's um, just having traveled um, the last. Uh, t- you know, ten years, you know, doing film festivals and film junkets and whatnot. And you just see how other countries have spent money on their infrastructure because they're not saddled with having uh, a, a big military. I, I was in uh, Germany for a film festival a couple of years ago and went to a prison. Let me just tell you what a prison is like. This is nonviolent offenders. These are people, drugs, and just all sorts of other. Uh, uh, Societal ills that aren't of a violent nature. And I went to this prison. It's like a school. It basically is like a junior high school where they're, they're taken there and they're re-educated and reoriented so they won't be repeat offenders. So they'll actually exit that prison becoming productive taxpaying members of society rather than just creating a business around uh, locking people up. I, I think when it comes to you know drugs in particular and gay marriage, think of the money to be made from – the gay marriage industry alone in the state of California, I think uh, <laughs> the money to be made from gay weddings, also the fun to be had at gay weddings, if you've ever been to a gay wedding. And the lawyers who are going to handle all the gay and divorces. And the lawyers for the gay divorces. It's right. just it's, – it's, 
I mean, they should see dollar signs. As for marijuana, I, I heard an interesting idea just because it's something that I support. It's also something that I don't take part in so much, but I support it. Uh, they talked about a labeling system where they would label the intensity because it's the one thing that I having, – having done it under controlled circumstances where I'm at home, I know I'm not driving anywhere – I've got me be my next day free. Um, it really has an effect on me. I'm a guy that's like I, I'm a I'm a I drink light beer. It doesn't take much. And uh, when it comes to marijuana, it really doesn't take much. So I have no idea. This is why I've never trusted. I know what a certain number of beers will do to me over a certain period of time. I have no idea with marijuana because it's so all over the map. There are certain strains. You, as a long time marijuana smoker, probably know exactly what your body can take how much you're able to do, what type works for you. I feel if the government had a labeling system, I would probably partake in it. And also, the one thing that's helped me out is the best sleep I've ever had, the most restful, deep sleep. I've woken up from having had uh, parts of a muffin or a cookie with the, the most energized the next day because, oh, my God, I actually slept through the night. I wasn't, like, sleeping for eight hours and, and not, you know what I mean? Like there's a whole thing with – we could get into a whole thing about sleep. That's a, that's a different podcast. It's a science podcast. But, but um, it's, it's actually really helped me out to the point where like this could be a thing that's – I don't trust sleeping pills. I think they're awful for you. Um, you're groggy the next day. But I felt energized from that. So I'd, I'd, something I'd consider if there was a labeling system that said this is about – like I can handle X number. If it was like they labeled it 1 to 10, I'm probably a 2. Well, so, here, now let me explain have you, have you to heard you. This? Have you heard that? I, I've heard this concept. Yeah, I, I like now, that. Now let me that just explain to you. A, a, a different angle on that same thing, mm -hmm. but from the conservative angle. Mm -hmm. Conservative believes in individual responsibility, meaning it doesn't matter what kind of drug or alcohol or whatever you're on. If you engage in dangerous activity, i.e. driving a vehicle and you harm someone, that's illegal. Correct. It shouldn't matter yeah. what you're on. But if you're on something and you're safe, that shouldn't be illegal. One of the things that's totally lost in the whole drug and alcohol thing is the tolerance thing. Right. People who do a lot of the drug build up a tolerance for it and in fact, I can speak from total experience in this. When I was getting high, I was getting sober. Understand? Mm -hmm. I was such an addict because I, I would wake up at 7 in the morning, start puffing until I passed out at midnight the that evening, right? And I wake up the next day and smoke more, right? And I mean I'd smoke all day long at work, at the job, you know, before a date in the restaurant, the bath, you know, everywhere, right? It got to the point where – I was stoned so much that I was sober, right? It, mm. Similar to how alcoholics drink – who are severe alcoholics who have the DTs drink to stop the quivers and stop the, uh, the shakes of the DTs. You know, like in the movie Leaving Las Vegas, how, how Nick Cage was drinking all day long, right? They drink to become normal. Mm. Point is, this will sound completely counterintuitive, but why should drunk driving be illegal, for instance, if the drunk – and it, viewed as an individual, is drinking to make himself sober. The, the, <laughs> the total alcoholic, like Nick Cage in that movie, is more dangerous driving not after he drank because he's shaking and having perhaps having seizures. That would be an interesting discussion to right. have. I, but, I, the, I, but my point is in all this is this is why the conservative wants government out of the labeling business. Uh, for instance, if the conservative essentially believes – that for the most part, most laws should be based on the Ten Commandments. Ten simple laws, not millions of pages of case law, ten simple laws with corollaries, with regulations based on uh, the evolution of modern inventions. You know, you need, The Ten Commandments does not address whether or not there's a yellow line in the middle of the road to drive cars on one side or another. That's sort of a – uh, an issue of standards and regulations that evolves from having cars and roads, etc. But thou shalt not murder is kind of a universal truth. Taking the life of someone else is horrible. Thou shalt not steal. Same thing. Thou shalt not bear false witness, i.e. commit perjury. These are basics, right? And if most laws regulate those things so that the, the citizen has maximum freedom and is incentivized to engage in maximum responsibility for themselves, you'll have overall the conservative beliefs, me, a better society overall with the most amount of freedom to do things like uh, smoke marijuana when you please responsibly or – marry who you want responsibly. But the conservative also believes, not to ramble too long here, for like gay marriage in something called states' rights issues. So for instance, if one state, California, it's okay with the state's populace to have 
same-sex marriages and or marijuana legalization and a state right across the border, Nevada, doesn't. It's the freedom of the state to, to make that determination. Why, too. why is it that you sound so sane and all the other Republicans? Because when I, when the I media television. doesn't cover people like me. The left-wing media wants to eviscerate these opinions because they're corrupt and it doesn't – if if people like college students heard these kind of opinions, unfiltered, unvarnished conservatism from Dr. Thomas Sowell all the way to a Rush Limbaugh, the country would be 75, 80 percent Republican conservative. Well, and do, do, I mean the, do, do, does the current party understand that the, the way that they've dumbed things down and the divisiveness is not what anybody – I think no, more they than don't. anything – They don't understand More that. than anything, the divisiveness – and the thing is this is how it affects me and this is how it affects probably a lot of other people potholes in in the streets uh, that go unfixed like the city of detroit having to deal with the fact that they're City, the city's going bankrupt, and and the you know, you're, you're just I, I guess the the way I see it is infrastructure. Infrastructure includes you know the the way that our we you know roads, bridges, buildings, etc. In an addition to that, education, which I think clearly, I mean, it, when when you see our numbers just constantly drop in our, our world standing on so many levels, it it's it it, it, it makes me sick, especially having having traveled around. Especially Especially in Europe when you see like, wow, they've actually spent money on their – they built things. I mean what have we built uh, – since the space program in NASA in, in the, the late 60s, what have we built? I mean as a nation, the United States of America, what have we created and built that is something we can point to and say we made that? I took a, I took a, a, a bullet train from London to Paris. I was there in a few hours. Boom. Um, I saw a documentary about the building of that of that train that would just blew me away. What 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 we can accomplish when we decide something? Why, why is there not a train for me? I want to be to Vegas in in forty minutes taking a train. Why can't I do that because and drink you on can the? Uh, not I mean, the thing to, is, is not I, to be I'm, cruel, but you can take. <laughs> An airplane, right? You can take an airplane. Months. True, that's right. But uh, what I'm saying is, uh, well, is that what have we built? Like this, let, this is what about, like, uh, like I feel like our proudest achievement is, is in the late '60s, uh, putting a man on the moon, and and since then, so many technologies. I'm just looking at as a proud American and, and growing up. You know, I, I my vivid memory being a child and sitting there with my dad. And pointing to the TV, we landed on the moon. He was freaked out. Like, look at what we've done. And since then, I don't think that there's there's much we can point to to be proud of. Um, perhaps, perhaps the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, th- I mean, is the, maybe the closest thing. But perhaps? that's not perhaps. Well, but the I would okay. no, 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 The freeing of I, a billion okay. people from a prison no, but, camp but, but wait, isn't but wait, an accomplishment. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, what I mean is that not an accomplishment. I mean something we built. Something that's right. like a tangible well, let's, thing uh, that you can point to let's and say. Let's step back a second and let's. Can we go through each one of those things, sort of in a little bit of detail, and kind of uncouple them? Well, but, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that what have we done? Well, this, is, think, this is what Biden, I think what have there's we built? An important issue. To, and I feel like Obama when Obama was running. This is, this is a guy. I'm telling you, a guy who voted for him twice. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Am I off the show? Am I off? No, no. I just. Wait, I just. And I didn't. I voted for him twice because the other guys were too crazy. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have considered another option. Okay. The other guys were too well, friggin' nuts. Well, let me ask you the no question. no swearing on the you're, show, right? You, friggin' you, is cool. you can swear. I don't want to swear. No, you can swear. Friggin', I, friggin nuts. No, say fucking. It's a no, better word. No, I like that nuts. word fuck. But the thing is, is I'm I, cool. I'm down. Obama like follows sex. me on Twitter. He follows me. He follows like a million people, but he follows me on Twitter. And I feel like I love the social change. What have we built, sir? You have not, you know, Barack Obama, you have not brought people together to build a thing. When well, he was running well, the first time, when he was running the first time, you just say as someone, I, 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 I'm, I'm, go I'm angry. I'm angry. Go ahead. I want to hear when your When he ran the first time, he talked about these electric cars we were going to have. We we're going to change this. And all. What have we built? We need to build something. I want to point to something. Do you remember when they would take a, a bottle of champagne, break it, and, and or they would cut a ribbon and look at this thing that we built? I want – where build something. Well, the, Show I, me have, something tangible the, we I have the answer for you, what is my it? friend. I'm dying I here. have the answer. Dying here. I'm dying here. Get the fucking government out of everything. <laughs> exactly. Here's the thing. First, two problems. Right. Number one, Obama was lying to you. He was lying to you. He's mm-hmm. a Saul Alinsky radical. This is not divisive rhetoric. This is just the truth. This guy is interested in power, not in making life better for you. He isn't. Everything in his history is about power. That's what the left is. Number two, 
Everything that you're talking about, all of the innovation, all of the vision, all of the expanding human horizons past what, what our limited vision can be into greatness. Like where we stand today was an unbelievable imaginary vision of human beings 200 years ago and 1,000 years ago and 10,000 years ago, etc. right? How do we get from there to here? You don't have the government get in the way. How, where, would we have cars well, today? Well, but at the same no, 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 time, hold on. Same time, would we have cars we can't, we today? We can't count on corporate no, America is, to, be, to uh, act in a moral way. Corporate America is not we America. Can't, can't. Corporate America is in synergy with the government. That's called crony capitalism. That's not the free market. That's not innovation. Okay? Can you imagine – if we'd have cars or airplanes today, if there was a government run by a guy like Obama in the 1880s and 1890s um, promising to limit horse uh, poop in the streets by regulating horses. Here's one of the things that happens. When the government steps in with like green energy or electric cars or something, they put mandates and difficulties on the way of the technology that is now. Yeah, they, they, mandate, they mandate the miles per hour the, through the, the oil industry mandates how many miles per gallon you can get on, on, on a gallon of gas. No, the government does. The government does. But in but collusion with the oil, big oil. Right. Because it's better for us to consume more more gasoline no. than it is to have vehicles that go 200, get 200 that's, miles per that's gallon. That's actually not true. Here's something that happened in the 70s. Let me let – me This is going to be a long podcast. No, this is going to be three long podcasts. <laughs> OK. In the 1970s, all sorts of the cafe standards were implemented. Right. Smaller, lighter, fuel-efficient cars. Why? Because environmentalism became a popular agenda item for people. And in 1974, in the wake of Watergate's uh, political atmosphere, a whole bunch of liberal Democrats, who, by the way, are still there today, got elected to Congress, a massive amount of them. Henry Waxman, David Obie, uh, Patrick Leahy, Joe Biden, all of them got elected that year. All of them brought this sort of 1960s hippy-dippy vision with them, and they passed a lot of these environmental laws. The laws that mandated smaller, lighter cars had two effects. Number one, it caused the deaths of untold people in cars that were less safe than they were when they were big and heavy. Number two, and this is the law of unintended consequences when government gets involved, it caused people to use a plethora more energy than they used before because suddenly – Gasoline became more expendable in people's minds because a car could go so much farther on the same amount of gas. They drove more. So you're saying we're wasteful jerks? Yes, but I'm saying which I don't wasteful with. Jorts, jerks. And the reason we're even even able to be more wasteful jerks is because of the very laws and regulations that were created to prevent wasteful jerkiness in the first place. In other words, if they got out of the way and let cars be cars and people by people. People want to innovate. People want to live better naturally, and innovation naturally happens when people are freest. For instance, here's a question. Would you want the people running your health care, the people who invented the iPhone and the iPad, or the people who run the DMV? Well, I would love Apple to uh, – Exactly. Right. Apple is a private company. They're incentivized to, in to innovate because of profit. The DMV is not incentivized by profit, so they have no incentive – to ever be efficient or uh, provide high quality service. That's a, right. that's the starkest. That's a, sort of a stark example of of this. There are more detailed. I, examples. I almost feel that, but there are corporate environments that I think that are. I want you are, to, are, are like shining examples. I want you to do something. I want right. you to throw out the term corporate in your mind because it doesn't exist, and replace it with intergovernmental. Because every what happens is when a corporation becomes large enough, they then figure out that they can make a bigger return on investment lobbying the government rather than making innovative products. This is just naturally what happens. And thank God, here's the wonderful thing about capitalism. Business cycles usually turn corporations like that into dinosaurs and they get killed. Example, IBM. The unstoppable IBM of 1970s computer industry, the mainframe computer, was destroyed by Microsoft and Apple, two companies that were tiny, that had no chance against them. IBM was lobbying the government big time. They became stifled and uninnovative and killed themselves with their stifling anti-innovation. Now, Apple and Microsoft are these gigantic companies, and they're going to start following IBM's cycle of the government lobbying and possibly the, the uh, stifling lack of innovation. And then new companies will come up 
and and uh, replace them because they'll be able to move smaller, faster, lighter, etc. Here's an, here's Which is when I look at look, look at certain certain corporate. Inv- I'm talking. Let's talk about the NFL for a second because it, it, it ties into an example. I I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Okay, so from um, my father worked for the auto industry. So just to tell you where my political influences came from, very liberal family, right? In terms of liberal, in terms of just socially liberal. Uh, it's I my family's mixed in just in terms of racially, ethnically speaking. Uh, I I and so also very influenced by Star Trek. And I would say my political views lean also towards Ron Swanson of uh, NBC's television's Parks and Recreation. So, so you know where I stand. The, the, the team in Detroit in the NFL is the Detroit Lions. And there's, it's sort of a culture of losers, right? It's, it's not – look, they, they went uh, – they got to the NFC Conference Championship game in 1992 uh, when Barry Sanders was on the that team. That was the were, 1991 season. The 91 season, right. Okay, 90, the Redskins. They, uh, Redskins, I thought they were beat by Dallas. No, they beat Dallas. In the, in the in the divisional playoff game oh, in Detroit, was it? Okay, yeah, they knocked uh, Aikman out of the game. Burline was quarterbacking for Dallas. They blew. But Dallas then it was out. okay. The next but year, then they the, had to go into right. uh, Washington right, the next right. week, and Washington that year was just a juggernaut. I love this. I love this. An NFL history lesson and political lesson. This is good. But what I'm saying is, is that there's. I certain, watched a lot of television. Right, right. So, but there's a, there's a lot of organizations that I admire. Right, in terms of they're able to get it done. I, I, I just and also as a small business owner. I'm a person that has been very DIY. I'm also a college dropout who started a business when I was 19, 19 years old, started a business because I realized that college was charging me all this money. They're charging me all this money so I could read a book and regurgitate the, t- the contents of the book. And I was like, I sat there and I'm like, I'm not trying to be a surgeon. I'm not trying to be a surgeon. I'm, I want to be a productive business person. So when I went and I spent $200 on one book, How to Publish a Magazine. I bought this book from a company, a, a magazine called Folio Magazine. And it was a trade book for people who wanted to learn how to do a magazine. I started a magazine called Film Threat when I was uh, ni- 19 years old. Right? I was actually 18 when I started in, out of high school. And then, and then first issue came out when I was 19. And then I wanted, I wanted a college education at USC. My family was pretty poor. My parents got divorced when I was nine years old and kind of argued about who was responsible for college. And I'm sitting here going like, I'm trying to get financial aid. So for various financial issues, and I was working three jobs. I had newspaper routes. I worked at a restaurant on weekends and I worked at a video store during the week and I went to college. This was my, I, so I was hard, hard work, came from a hardworking Midwest Family. I, w- I was so distraught that I wanted to go to the school, the film school that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg went to, USC. Spielberg didn't go to USC. Spielberg didn't go to USC. He, he went actually to didn't go Long to Long Beach. Right. But uh, Lucas went to USC. Yeah. And I said, well, if I can't afford to go to the school that George Lucas went to, I want to read the same books. I went on the campus. My mom drove me to the campus uh, on a trip to visit our uncle. And I went on the campus and I bought as many of the books as I could. And then I wrote down the names of the books and the authors. I read every single book that the students – because I said, well, if I can't afford the education, I'm going to read those books. You're going to self-educate. Yes. And I have started businesses. I started a video and DVD distribution company. I've started – I started a film threat turned into a website. I've started various businesses. No one hired me to write a book about film festivals. I decided one day – I'm going to write a book about film festival. It's a weird, you have to train your brain. It's almost like, and I worked in the corporate world in publishing for a while because I sold my magazine to Larry Flint. I'm giving you the, the thumbnail footnotes version of my career to tell you how like I do tend to lean more conservative, especially favoring business you because know, I have paid taxes. No, no, no. When you write a check I'm, to I'm the government, I'm gonna make you write a, a check to the government for seventeen thousand dollars yeah. cash. You pay to the government. You tend to think, yeah, I wish that they were spending our money Let better. Let me make but I look a at bold statement. Let yes. me make a bold statement. Yes. you are no liberal. You are no libertarian. I'm you liberal are, when it comes you, to let certain. Let me finish. A lot of you things. are a conservative. You just don't know it yet. Uh, conser- That's the thing. You are you are conservative someone, libertarian. You are someone who I call an evolver. You are someone like David Mamet no, or John Republic- Voigt. You are moving to the to the conservative side as you as you become a wiser person. But there's no one to point to. There's no. Where are the heroes today in the you, Republican Party? You are the hero. No, the individual. I, I'm unelectable. I'm unelectable. I'm not talking about to other people. I mean to you. You are your hero. You well, don't need heroes. You're not looking for someone to fl- swoop out of the sky and save your cat out of the tree. You'll do it for yourself. Yeah, I just do that. I'm, right. Yeah. I'm the kind of person that when and I have an apartment. Is, or, and the I thing just, is, people who vote for Obama 
are mm-hmm. voting for a guy, whether they know it or not, who wants them to be victims, who wants them to not, not succeed, not prosper, not get ahead, not think for themselves, not not see the brilliance of but opportunity this, of America. I don't know if you could completely, completely blame Obama, but if you look at like, no, society, I don't blame but, Obama. He's just a reflection of it. But, but he was but the candidate. But what I'm saying is, is that like when you look at like our culture, we have heroes that are athletes. I, I admire them for the for the, the you know their physical and 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 sport the achievements in sports amazing. Yes, but I don't necessarily think that they should be our greatest heroes. I, I really think that scientists should be our heroes. You don't heroes think Tiger they, Woods should be everyone's role model and no, have, have a I successful marriage? don't think he can. And also, I don't care. <laughs> that's about, a joke. You like, totally missed right, that. That's true. <laughs> well, like, yes. But what I'm saying is, is that I don't give a crap even about Tiger Woods' personal life. Exactly. Like, it's okay. I don't care. It's completely it's immaterial. Like, it's, it's, it, can it's, he hit the ball into the hole better than the other guy? That's the only thing that matters. That's his achievement. We're still talking about golf, are we? We're still talking about We'll golf. talk about golf later, <laughs> motherfucker. All, all, all I'm saying is, is that like, I think that now our, the, the problem is when you look at the heroes – of today are not the heroes of the past. The heroes of the past used to be uh, people who achieved in whether it be um, entrepreneurial achievement, um, Thomas Edison, uh, Henry Ford, uh, Walt Disney, uh, I, 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 you know, people who, who built things and who achieved things and politicians were even heroes. I can't I don't know if politicians are so much heroes today. They're certainly probably the most mistrusted profession um, with good reason. With good reason, yes, yeah. absolutely, with good reason. But, but what I was trying to, my point about Detroit Lions and NFL, which Detroit Lions I feel have a saying, it's not over till we lose. Because I have watched Lions games in the past where it's been they're up by three touchdowns, and I think to myself, how are we going to lose this one? Come on, how are we going to lose it? Come on, Lions, you can do it. You can lose this game, and they will lose being three touchdowns up. It's crazy. So, so there is a culture there that is not a winning culture. But then there are other organizations, the New England Patriots. I freaking hate them. Don't but- say that word on my <laughs> podcast. I'm saying I, I hate those. I agree. I agree. What I'm saying that is- tuck play, They're- that bullshit oh, yeah. was intentional yeah. grounding. If that wasn't a fumble. That was a good year Lost for them down, to win. Loss, was of, good, loss of yardage, Raider ball. It was a magical year. They should not have got they, – they, that, that was a bad decision. In any case, I look at organizations like the NFL, right? Look at the NFL. Would you want the, the, the corporate the, or NFL to run the U.S. government? You might think differently. Or like I look at the mafia. They built Vegas. I think the mafia is better at bil- – you look at like you pointed out Apple. I mean look at, look at what Apple – which I think was mostly Steve Jobs. And, and there are charismatic – corporate leaders i've met them in my you know i've been lucky enough to meet people who blew me away that are just like they walk in a room and there's 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 a presence to them there's definitely an aura and there's something bigger going on i i i it's, it's, your, your point earlier about the dmv or uh, apple uh, is is well put i i agree with you that you know and that's a culture that's difficult it it really takes a totalitarian environment i don't mean in a negative way like dictators who slaughter and kill i'm talking about totalitarian in the sense that the person from the top runs the runs the company and sets the agenda and sets what's important and sets goals we're going to build this we're going to do this Right, like Tom Landry or uh, yes. Vince Lombardi. Yes, but, but keep see, going. But I love see, it. Those are teams. They're great heroes. Those are corporations. Those are those are entities yes, with a goal that's operating within this free enterprise operating but how do system. You within, called- here's the big question: When when Reagan railed against. Which I voted for Reagan. Good Reagan, man. Look, I, he's coming back for two more episodes. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Look. When, <laughs> You know, when he would rail against government being broken, it's like, but you are a part of it. So how do you criticize it while at the same time changing it? Because if you know you what I'm saying? Read, like that argument because, I never agreed because with. Because I thought you, that was a bad way of putting because it. Because if it was you read Ronald Reagan and you understand what he was all about, you understand that his entire goal was teaching people to go back – what the Tea Party is. That's why I asked you about the Tea Party at the beginning. Right, right. To go back to the constitutional originalist foundations where the government is small and the individual is large. That's what, fix pe- that's what fixes things. And our government has – just grown out of control and imposes well. well there's now, no, there's no look, disagreeing with that, but I, I will I, say this. Repu- I got to give the Republicans okay. credit for one thing. 
they are really good at naming things. They are so good at naming things. The Democrats have to get much better at naming things. When, when, when Republicans name a thing, there is so much thought process to naming what that thing is. Compassionate conservatism, brilliant. When they name a project or Obamacare, the, the naming of that. Obama named Obama, Obamacare. Well, I, but I'm saying is, is they've, 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 made, they've taken control of that well, word. Well, I'll tell you. So when you were on last, we were talking about uh, you were talking about uh, labeling things. So you want to elaborate that? Uh, yeah, the just, names of Republicans. Exactly. I, I feel like the Republicans are so good at labeling things that make it, it make they make it sound good. Compassionate conservatism, or they can make something sound bad, like Obamacare. It's almost like the pronunciation has been. Ha, ha, th- there's been a memo that's gone out. Make sure when you pronounce Obamacare, you say it in a disdainful way. You know, so I, what I what I'm saying from as someone who's had to do as a DIY self-made guy, I've always had to do my own marketing. Right. You're a comedian. And we talked about this, you know, as a comic, you create your own job. You've created a job for yourself. No one said, I would like to do a show. Uh, I would like to do a show where someone talks about politics. I'm going to call it the Ari David show. And then you happen to have the name Ari David. Then that, that makes no sense. Yeah. There, you created there was this. no want ad in the newspaper. <laughs> You're right. Wanted the Ari David show host. Right, right. We're looking for an Ari David. Right. Right. Who can be an Ari David. You right. created yeah. the show. You created your comedy career. Because no one, no one hires, no one says looking for comedians. There's no job to do. So, so I feel like you understand. The, so I've always had to do my own marketing, and and so when I see that the, the the Republicans are just so good at doing that, and I feel like the, the, the Democrats have to take that they have to take that to heart that they're just horrible at naming things. You know, they 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 they're, they're trying to be too honest. It's like, look, you can. Mar- it's sort of like the the, the thing is like um, when I've when I've wanted to have anal sex with my girlfriend, I'll, I'll try to say it like. I'll just say. I'll it's just say. It's really this. hard to get her to strap that thing on. Well, what I say is, what I say. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was too easy. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what what I'll say is, is the, you know, anal is the yoga of sex acts. <laughs> so if you call anal the yoga of sex acts, it sounds appealing. It's like, better than calling it the enema of sex acts. Yeah, it's like I don't know, yoga. A girl <laughs> chicks really dig yoga. So if you say anal's the yoga of sex acts, it's. I, so what I'm saying is, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot. Does it involve stretching and pain? (laughs) I've learned a lot from Republicans, and I'm saying if you could take something awful and name it something, something that sounds cute or nice or appealing to a woman, you can you can be as manipulative as the Republicans, but for good, not evil, right? And by that I mean like uh, you know uh, you know we've all we've all passed gas in front of our respective mates. There's just you could just say, oh, is that another puppy rainbow? I can't believe the puppy rainbow exploded in the room again. And when they hear puppy rainbow, puppy rainbow sounds like something that's nice. It sounds something like that's cute. Or if you burp and say, oh, wow, that's a unicorn howl. What, OK, whatever. Now I'm really would going you, off the rails. Would you agree that Democrats do this, too? I would agree they do it and they're not as good at it. Um, I would say they're not as successful. What makes I say Republicans th- are really much better. That if if the Republicans were so successful at this, then how is it that Mitt Romney got destroyed on the ninety nine percent to one percent meme, or the forty seven percent meme, or the he's a rich guy who murdered people meme? Uh, Remember those memes that ran? Through I the feel like, I feel like that is so ingrained in our, our 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 culture right now, just sort of out there that almost nothing could have changed that well i, I feel like that see, is just in, in the just, dna you just nailed it because you said ingrained in the culture one of my dearest friends and mentors i wasn't that close of a friend with him but i knew him and he was a real mentor for me was andrew breitbart did you, have you ever heard of oh, andrew yeah, yeah. and andrew would say that politics are downstream of culture so it doesn't matter what a political leader does or tries to do or what kind of message they gets out. If the cultural Mississippi River is running against them, their little creek running up river of message gets nowhere against a cultural awash in a, in a meme or an idea or a, a preconceived notion. And I believe what you just said, while not completely inaccurate, is much more uh, the product of the, the liberal – uh, entertainment culture, the liberal news media, and the liberal academia institutions, colleges and high schools and education, that makes people think 
that it's Republicans who are doing all this stuff when it's really Democrats. And I would give an example. Back when the Russian Revolution happened, there were two groups, the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. Bolshevik meant majority. Menshevik meant major- minority. But the Bolsheviks were in the minority and the Mensheviks were actually the majority of people. But the Bolsheviks used bone-crushing techniques, mob warfare, you know, riots in the streets, uh, riling up public discontent, essentially the culture, the same kind of culture that you saw in the Occupy Wall Street movement, that kind of thing that uh, you've been stolen from. That person stole from you. It's all the rich's fault. That group did it to you and that kind of anger. So the point is – Although it wasn't like a, a free election kind of land, Russia, post the the disposing of the Tsar and the uh, takeover by the communists, there was enough culture in place so the population allowed those tyrannical leaders to seize power and hold it. And I think that's what we see today, not to that kind of scale, obviously. You know, there, there aren't yet gulags and, and uh, forced labor camps in Potemkin villages yet. We pray there never are. But – Everything that Democrats do, the media says Republicans do. Everything that Republicans are blamed for, Democrats are actually doing. Case in point, George Bush. George Bush was accused of running a a war for oil and uh, doing an illegal war and uh, doing targeted drone strikes against innocent people. What does Obama do? Goes into war in Libya without the congressional approval that Bush had in Iraq, uses – uh, drone strikes to kill in this in one case a bad guy but an American a guy Anwar al Awlaki in in Yemen and imposes all of these draconian kind of uh, patriot law uh, restrictions on free people in the name of security that if it was George Bush the media would be screaming about but it. Do, but don't you think it's the that it's the military industrial complex that's so ingrained that that I, I feel like every president. It's so funny because they, they run on a certain platform and with optimism and this is what I'm going to do. And I feel like there's the pre- the first day that the president goes to, to work, right? He's laid out his Some clothes. Some guys take He's him all in the excited. back room and say – Someone take uh, him in a room yeah. and say, look, um, th- we, we got to tell you what's really going on. And, and presented with here are all the scary things happening in the world and everyone who wants to kill us. Dirty bombs, you know, the, the, the frightening – just like this is what we have observed. Also, by the way, that folder there, there's aliens. There are aliens. We, we found them in the 50s. Her, in name, Roswell, is, her name is Nancy Pelosi. And, and we've, we've backward engineered all of their technology oh, and that's that where NASA awesome. – You don't even react. That exactly. was Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> it's Nancy Pelosi. She's one of the aliens. Um, I'm not a fan of hers either, but uh, by the way, um, so I, you know, I, I just feel like it's interesting to see the the shift in tone from a president who would feel like I'm going to be the president that's all about peace, and every single one of them when they get into office must ha- it must be the most horrible first day meeting as president with with the 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 guys who run at, from the guys from the Pentagon. That, that run the military that basically say, here's what's really going on. So you need to do this. OK, this I'm going to ask you happen. a very quick question. And I'm just I'm just saying yes, yes. this is my theory. This is yes. all theorized. Right. OK, but uh, paranoid quick question and then we'll yes. talk more. Just yes or no. Is there evil in the world? Absolutely. OK, good. Um, here's how Obama disproves that. Obama has completely dismantled or is working on dismantling some of the most important defense systems to prevent bad people, evil people from doing terrible things to the country. Thus, if it was true that there was a military industrial complex type conspiracy that would pull all elected leaders to the side and say, was it, was it, was it in your ear, in your ear, in your ear, do this, do that. And they, they turn ash and white. I know Obama's black, but I'm just imagining him triple blanching. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, why would they ever do the kinds of things Obama's doing? To say, uh, it, news came out that mm-hmm. due to some of the sequester cuts that Obama is allowing to happen because mm-hmm. he has discretion in what gets funded and what doesn't. There, we have a missile defense system on our west coast from mm-hmm. California to Alaska. It has uh, it had forty four interceptors. They're cutting it down to thirty interceptors, and they're, this is the worst part. They're cutting down the amount of time the interceptors are manned from 24 hours a day to eight hours a day. Now, if there was a military industrial complex warning a president about all the dangers in the world that you just outlined, why in the hell would that ever happen in this at the same time mm-hmm. as there is not only a threat, but they have said it in North Korea that they intend to nuke us 
And one of the lessons of history is if bad people say something, believe them. And number two, Iran is developing a nuclear weapon. How could that happen? Right. I, I, I'm not uh, – yeah, I, I think that they're probably more concerned about dirty bomb. I think that is a more likely scenario than an ICBM actually landing on our coast. I think that is that is almost – especially if some of these like tests in these nations have proved that kind of technology is, is, is they not something that they they're – They couldn't put a shorter range missile on a freighter, park it 300 miles off the coast and fire it off the freighter. I guess that is possible. Right. So, so that's my point. The, the other thing I would you mention You should write is, action, an action movie based on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would freak me out too Freedom much, though. one. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Ari <laughs> David <Whoa>. presents. <laughs> um, the, the other thing is um, I, I generally don't believe in that kind of conspiracy theory for this reason. How much of everything do we know these days? How hard is it to keep a secret? Look at all the people in government who leak stuff. In other words, if it was yeah, no, really, I, don't, I don't believe in the larger conspiracy theories of you know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure talking about those. those. I'm talking about just the idea that a president gets elected who's idealistic, wants to do good, and is told, uh, no, 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 you can't really do the good because uh, these reasons. Yeah. Well, I don't think that he's told he can't really do the good. I think that he's told here are the realities. And this is what we have observed to be the most successful way of dealing with these kinds of threats. And it's a tough decision. I mean, it's something it's it's sort of why I think that the that the presidency ages. I mean, aside from the fact that that is to be one of the toughest jobs in the entire world, um, it, it's it, it, it's knowing things that that would turn us ashen, ashen white, although we're both pretty light complexion. I'm pretty pale. Yeah. I'm pretty pale. I'm not I stay a, out of the sun. I don't get a lot of sun. Uh, yeah, and you don't look it's wrinkled. Bad you. you look good. You yeah, know, well, thank good. you. Yeah. Thank you. I was an indoor kid. Me too. An indoor kid, yeah. yeah. See, there you go. Yeah, there are benefits I, of that. I used to get teased for not having a suntan, and it's like I see those people nowadays, I and know. they look like this, yeah, and yeah. I'm like – They look 20 years older. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, don't you feel 100 good? years older. Yeah, no. Don't you, I feel pretty good now. And yeah. cancer How old are you? 47. You're 47. Okay, yeah. I'm 42. Yeah. And we look easily – Oh, t- you look probably 32 to 35. Yeah. We both look that. I mean like yeah. the girls who are listening to this right now, hot girls, would want to have sex with us. That's how good we look. They would. They, they would. Did. Yeah. They would. And, and Republican or Democrat. Right. Yeah. They're listening to the show right now. They're listening to the show. Wanting to practice that yoga thing right. we're talking about. They're Google imaging <laughs> us at this moment. Yeah. It's – yeah, yeah. it's uh, – yeah, yeah, but the point is about someone like Obama. Right. This is a guy who uses straw man arguments and critical theory to create the impression that he's doing one thing that's all in our interest. Well, in the, in the reality is it's the exact opposite. Obamacare, for instance. It's called the Affordable Health Care Act. It's going to skyrocket the cost of – Healthcare, uh, make everything more expensive throughout our economy, cause people to die, like in uh, socialized medicine nations like uh, England and Canada, where people actually get rationed out of their care. Oh, I'm sorry, you you have cancer, but you're you know you're over fifty. We're not going to treat you. It just doesn't fit our cost analysis. But I'm in pain. So what? The, you know, it's tax money. But I'm dying. So what? You know, that that's what's going to happen. And and as a conservative, as we talked earlier. Conservatives constantly elevate the glory of the individual even if it costs the collective money or resources because individuals are precious to us. That's that's the great divide in the abortion debate actually. Uh, so often liberals think conservatives are against abortion because we want to control women. No, it's because we see an unborn child in a womb as going to be a human being who deserves the right to live. Uh, at the same time, then you have to have some services to be able to – you know. Uh, uh, the pay for that child. I think that's where. I mean, it's one thing to be and on one side of the issue. Here's where it gets awesome. Here's where, where does it get here's awesome? Where conservatism is awesome. I, if the free market is allowed to flourish and people are allowed to be prosperous, prosperous people in America have been so generous that they support foundations and charities and churches and all these other social uh, safety net programs that operate so much more efficiently than government. That people, Planned Parenthood is a great example. It's not. It gets money from government. It gets the vast majority for private donations. If Planned Parenthood didn't get money from government don't you think they'd get money from their donors still they'd be there as exa- now planned parenthood is a bad example because they are literally an abortion company not a women's health company but if a company if a organization like that actually no. helped single mothers who are having children have the children safely and healthily they would they would be taken care of no. and there'd be more of them let me just finish the idea if the government didn't tax us or regulate us to death so we'd all have more money to be prosperous now with. here's here's where I'll blow you away with uh 
perhaps something that you wouldn't expect coming from where I stand. I, I believe that um, abortion should be legal. At the same time, my personal view is that if, I, if there's an unborn child and it's mine, it will, it will be in this world. So I, with my then wife, she got pregnant. It wasn't even a discussion. It's like we're having this kid and this, the second one was a surprise and I have two beautiful children and I'm, uh, I, I, being a father is, is extremely important to me. Um, and it's, it's something I take very seriously. So um, for me personally, I would, I would not abort a child. For the world at large, I feel that that option should be available. So I have this personal morality about myself at the same time. Is this a, is, I don't know if this is a conservative view, but it's having two completely opposing ideas in your head at the same time. Try to, try to, like, I don't believe it for me, but I believe it should be available for other people who will have to live with that choice. Have to live with that choice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Gore just identified the complete structural failing of liberalism and leftism in that statement. Let's because hear Because the liberal Let's or the it. leftist would call you a hypocrite. Meanwhile, the conservative – A proud hypocrite. Well, whatever, whatever they call you, they would label it – A hot hypocrite. They would, uh, a, I'm trying to label a, myself a, in a better well way. A well-endowed hypocrite. A well-endowed hot remember, hypocrite. These are, these are, this is the left that now hates you for that statement. You Why? Have, you have just undermined their orthodoxy. You understand? The most but it's my personal choice. It doesn't matter. They don't care about your choice. The conservative cares about you as an individual and that you have personal choices. The left only cares about the collective narrative. And if you're off the plantation – they shoot you. So here's my point. The conservative understands that we live in the world of both Einstein and Pope Francis, <laughs> science and God. They are not incompatible, but they are not the same. One is scientific knowledge, what you know with certainty. The other is what you believe in with faith. They don't, they don't necessarily like oil and vinegar in a salad dressing always get along great. But for the most part, you can hold both in, without contradiction. But here's the thing. Um, you know not to apply uh, Catholic doctrine to uh, astrophysics if you're observing a, uh, another galaxy necessarily. Or building a bridge. Or building a bridge, right? You're, you're not going to uh, assume the structure of sound because Jesus told you it is. Uh, on the other hand, you're not going to take Einstein's theory of relativity – into church with you when you're singing a biblical hymn and start using critical theory to criticize the biblical hymn because it's not compatible with equals MC squared. Understand, the conservative understands faith and knowledge are different, but it doesn't mean that either is less valuable. The liberal who has in many cases, modern liberal or leftist, I should say, to be more accurate, in many cases has eliminated God or faith from the belief system because everything can be answered with science, has trusted in mankind too much because the failings of man is that science will always be incomplete. You will never have all the knowledge because there's always another discovery out there. Right. Thus, you can't supplant one with the other. Well, and, and when it comes to the point you just made about abortion, right? Mm -hmm. you understand pragmatically – this is science – that in running a society, there is going to be a situation out there in which an unwanted pregnancy, God forbid, occurs. An unwanted a, child. An unwanted child, a, an accidental pregnancy in which – People will have no good option based on a number of mitigating circumstances. We can imagine all what those are and that these people do not deserve to be locked up as murderers for having an abortion. But at the same time, faith, you realize in your own life the difference between right and wrong and that a child of your loins is your child to love and nurture and bring into this world even at personal sacrifice and you will do whatever is necessary to make sure that happens even if it costs you personal – uh, comfort financially, etc., because the life of that child is more important to you personally. See, that's that's conservatism in a nutshell. Are you outing me as a conservative? Is that what you're no, trying, to, trying just, to do? No, I'm just uh, outing you you're, as a conservative. I, well, 
I just I, I <laughs> that was brilliant. I well, I, 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 I just I, I can't. When I look at the modern Republicans, I think they're just they're just to me. It reminds me of the slow kid in class. It's like you can't even agree on empirical facts. Well, let me like, t- let me tell you why empirical facts. Let, like let me tell you why they remind you of the slow kid in class. It, it, because they have, I'm talking about the modern. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, talking about like, I'm talking, talking about today. them right now. I'm okay, talking good. about John Boehner, Eric Cantor, yes. Kevin McCarthy. He's it's morons. Beca- it's because that's right. They Mental are morons. Midgets. Because they have no principles. No one respects a weakling. Did you respect Joey Harrington? Uh, no. Because he was a weakling. Did you respect Barry Sanders? Yes. Because he was a man, right? Yeah, yeah. I, wow. I'm, I can't believe you remembered Joey Harrington, the quarterback for the uh, Detroit Lions. I, talk about. I remember Eric Hipple. Oh, oh my God. I remember Eric Hipple. Okay. okay. I haven't heard that name in so many years. That's so <laughs> funny. But yeah, Barry Sanders, the, the, that guy, when they would show slow-mo, which the NFL innovated, the, the, the Steve Sable and his and dad, the, the, his dad yeah. like that, that company, the shooting NFL, it's like ballet. I mean, it's unbelievable. It looks right. so epic. Like Barry Sanders moved like a human okay. should not be able now, to move. Now let's complete the analogy. Okay, I'm sorry. Barry I'm sorry. Sanders is the analogy for someone strong and clear. Right. Joey Harrington is a wasted draft pick. Right, Weakling, right. bad arm, bad decision-making, throws interceptions, right? Right, right, right? Can't hold on to the ball. That's what the modern Republican, why the modern Republican leadership looks so inept and impotent mm-hmm. because they have no co- co- cohesive messaging because they have no cohesive belief. In order to say strongly, I believe in this with certainty, both from a scientific certainty and a faith-based certainty, even if you're wrong, People go see that and they go, you know what? That guy's strong. That guy believes something. I'm going to follow that person. I respect that. And that's why you see Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama. They're as wrong as wrong could be on most issues, but they say it with certainty and belief and people go, well, they must be strong leaders. They, say the, they see the current Republican Party, which, which is essential of messages. Uh, there is no war on women here. First of all, they said war on women, even if they said there's no war on women. So people heard war on women. Right. They're denying an accusation rather than being strong in a belief. They're, they're not being uh, uh, aggressive or uh, uh, assertive in any way. And people see weaklings. And then what did you do to the weakling in school? Beat him up, right? right? He's a weakling. Right. Right. <laughs> so that's the problem. It's not that they're bad. It's not that they believe in everything that's wrong. They, most of the stuff they believe in, cutting taxes, smaller government, lower regulation, that's all good stuff. But they can't explain it because they don't believe it really. Well, I just feel that the current rock stars of the Republican Party are the D team. I mean they really are – not even the B or C team. They're the D team. It's, it's – and it's and, – and, 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 you know, I, I think that's why it's made it uh, – easier for me to make the choice well these people are smarter and seem to have it together they're at least going to be capable or at least i believe in making better choices for what it what what we need as a society and let, back to your point about uh, religion and, and science uh, for for a moment you say you know you're saying that the pope and uh, what was it the pope einstein. And, and einstein okay so i've always been a science guy to me science this empirical fact is an empirical fact and that's it global warming I, the science says that this is real there's you can't, i mean how many more documentaries can we can be made about the about what's happening i saw an amazing one about the glaciers the melting glaciers which was spectacular i forget the name of it but uh, amazing documentary but when it comes to religion the church has been tainted by it's the recent scandals we don't need to get into that what i'm saying is that a spiritual life i think is very important it's shifted i believe from being church to for some religion might be for me, it's the movies. I, going to the movie theater is my church. For some, it's Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. You know what I mean? Like there For is, George Will, it's the Baltimore Orioles the Baltimore baseball Orioles. diamond. You know, you, know? Is, there you get yeah. spiritual – you need spiritual uh, enlightenment. So you need your spirit uplifted in some way to survive. Science alone, cold – Hard science, not enough. Some sort of spiritual uh, awakening uh, just to get through the day. But, but I'm saying that that has, has – so I believe in that. I don't believe in the mocking of, which I've seen so often from the left, the mocking of people for being religious as being 
stupid. I think in a lot of uh, cultures, especially in the South, uh, churches uh, like community, churches not as much about – it's as much about uh, getting together for a barbecue or an ambrosia salad or just socializing. I um, like ambrosia. Exactly. Ambrosia salad's good. Um, as it is about prayer. So so as as someone who – I will say that I don't believe in religion, but I believe that there's something, and I won't even say God, I'll say, and I, because I, I, I won't say atheists. I believe that there's something going on that I think it's arrogant of man to think that he can explain it yet. So when I see people in religion who say, absolutely definitive, here's exactly what happens, I think, I don't think you, you can know that if you want to believe that, because I do think that belief is a powerful narcotic and, and not in a bad way like like a belief that you could create this podcast that you could have a comedy career that i could i've never written a book before no one hired me i decided to write a book and that's a belief a narcotic that will get me results i guess i've always been just a results oriented person because as a small business owner i've hired a lot of people and I feel like mentoring is a big part. Like if they're really good at what they do and I build them up, then it just makes me look good, you know? And then they have skills to move on. And everyone who's worked for me has gone on to do bigger and, and better things, I think. So I'm proud of that legacy of um, having had people work for me that go on and the producers on Futurama and The Simpsons, they're, you know, have built their own businesses. They've, they've sold screenplays. They've made documentaries successful they've written their own books successful so mentoring is really important for me and i think that when you you see when you see what what is possible with regard to um having a a career that i I guess would just be described as self-made it does make you kind of look at things in a in a different way i guess that that's that's, you know i guess it's just made me I, I don't know if I, I can. I can't. I don't know if I can say I'm a conservative. I think that'll. Well, you don't I'll, have to say you're a conservative. I can. I'm say, saying that like, I certainly. Like, I will tell you. Like, like there's certain conservative the, ideals. Like that in I the have. last in the last episode where we talked about how other people can see you more clearly than yourself. You can see me. Right. Clearly. Right. Right. Uh, to you, so I might look more libertarian than conservative. So the but, pot thing definitely. Uh, but, yeah, you, but yeah. again, that's just one thing. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we don't know where you stand on anal. We got to get that. Uh, it's, answer I, I love being a bottom that's the best <laughs> who doesn't like that um here, here's the thing um so often it, it, it's sort of i think that i'm jewish and the real big difference between judaism and christianity that i've always observed is the concept of the abstract god you walk into a, a a synagogue, and there's no representation of God or idol. You walk into a church, there's Christ on the cross, and the Christian believes that that is God. Do you think that that's just bad marketing on the part of Jews? Because I think that their holidays no, I think it's, sound miserable. I think it's a – well, the, again, Where's with, the with one Judaism, where, you, where you have to fast? The worst breath you know, I have uh, smelled – on my Jewish friends during fast, dude, can you just have a lozenge? Is it is it breaking? But to have a mint uh, again, it's belief, right? <laughs> but but here's here's the 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 difference. Hanukkah it, just doesn't sound fun. Christmas is fun. I, I have a lot of fr- Jewish friends who are Christmas tree Jews. I've heard that term, Christmas tree Jew. Yeah, you've heard that term. Sure. Where they're like, well, we kind of you know we do the present thing. Ah, you you take. You know, well, I feel like just as in the way that like Republicans are, I think are better at naming things. I yeah. think well, uh, our, Christians our, are better at holidays. They than are. Jews. They much are much better. It's a, but it's a different yeah. thing. I mean, Lent doesn't sound happy. I love pica- potato pancakes. Food, the food. Yeah, Jewish, but do, would you want do you want to give soup things up for forty days for Lent? Hell no. Exactly. Talk yes. about miserable. There are no forty days Jewish holiday, right. and we're the depressing ones. Right. Bull right. Shit. <laughs> No, but here, this gets to a kind of a technical thing. So yeah, there's the invisible God, the visible God. Uh, Judaism believes that the concept of God is this overwhelming power that's so profound you can't even try to imagine it, let alone represent it physically as something to see, touch, taste, hear, whatever. Yeah, like trying to explain the theory of relativity to a caveman. Right. I, I just feel like that's where we are now. No matter how evolved we think we are, whatever is in the universe – I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about – 
what what the hell are we doing? We're on a ball or, in space. Or, or let's make it even, even a smaller analogy. It's trying to teach you – know, no one uses these anymore. But it's like trying to teach your grandmother to program the clock on the, on the VCR. Or send an Remember? email. Yeah, or send, or send an, an email. email. That's a better one. Send an email. Teaching it's, grandma to There is send no – or teach your cat how to play a violin. Piano, yeah. maybe. Right. <laughs> Violin. Uh-uh. Th- this is where I and I but, love theories yeah. about uh, y- you know like right. uh, uh, physicists who will who will explain spirituality in a scientific right. way. But let me get to my point about yeah, this sorry, because but- I think it has to do with what you're talking about. Because America is a generally a Christian nation, the more Christians than Jews, and because not even all Jews think in these terms or realize this or have a perspective on this, but. So many people who are essentially raised Christian or exposed to it have the concept that I will see God. I will, I will understand God. I'll, I'll be able to experience it physically. They have a hard time bridging that last quote-unquote leap of faith to understanding, no, you can never touch, smell, taste, or see that. You just have to believe it's there and you know, like falling backwards in one of those summer camp things. It will catch you. And Jews – who have a concept of this having a philosophical advantage over Christians in that they understand that it's okay to believe in something you don't see, and thus it's easier for them to overcome that last human hurdle. Now, when it comes to religions, remember, religions are manifestations of imperfect human beings. They're man-made. They're man-made. Religions are all They're man-made. T- they are man-made. Let, right. Let's just let's do, that's are, an empirical fact. That's an Religions empirical are fact. man-made. It was said on the Ari David show here today. Right. And I will stipulate that. But that does not mean that finding God through a religion is not legitimate at the same time. I I, 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 let me, that's, yeah, that's very profound. I think that that's, yeah. Yeah. But so if there was a church that played Nine Inch Nails, maybe I would go to that church. And there is a church, the 420 church on Hollywood. Those those rock and roll churches? Where they smoke weed. There's a 420 church? Yeah, I would, you know, uh, Craig, uh, what's his name? Craig X. Is that the one I used to pass it? It was like near Fairfax. Yes. On um, Uh, La Brea and Hollywood Boulevard, I think. Like right around there? Yeah. Rock and roll church? Well, this was a smoking weed church. But the (laughs) the point is, that would have been a good church for me 20 years ago. Whatever. (laughs) But the point is, that's, I think, one of the... There's a vagina church. But that's one of the reasons I think that uh, Christianity's marketing has been easier because it's easier to market something you can see than something you tell people. Uh, it's there. You just can't see it. See, this is Coca-Cola. Uh, you can have it. You just can't taste you it. You can sell baubles. You can wear a cross. You can like, yeah, you can, you can market and mer- there's, you know what? There's religious merch. Right. There's religious merch. Right. But not just in like- Judaism. Understand? Right. Yeah. Right. So that's wow. uh, but that that's one of the reasons that it's harder for people to see that this is actually okay to hold in your mind at the same time because of course when you see a cross with Jesus on it in a church, it's not going to come to life and ascend you to heaven and resurrect you. It's just a piece of stuff. And when people are told that it's God, they see it. They so have what a you're saying is is if Jesus lived in our time and was crucified, we'd all have T-shirts. And action figures, and I think that that stuff actually still exists. It that would exists be like now. Kim Kardashian. It yes. would be. It would be. Mer- because that's the one thing I don't understand. Maybe you could explain this. Um, I know we're running short on time, but as someone that's into marijuana, I notice you have a, a, a T-shirt you're wearing now. The dude abides uh, from the Big Lebowski. Is Lebowski Lebowski? Uh, I love it. Yeah, I love that. I'm movie. the dude, dude. You are the dude. Oh my god, you're a lot like the dude. I actually know the guy <laughs> yeah. that 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 movie's based on, the real dude. Oh, Jeff that's Dowd. sweet. Oh, t- t- yeah. I could tell you stories about him. But what I don't understand about pot culture, could you explain this one thing? Maybe this is a cliffhanger to the next show. I don't know. What's with all the pot merch? I don't understand. Like, I love beer, but I don't have a beer keychain or a beer wallet or a beer patch or a beer bumper sticker or a beer T-shirt. I don't have merch related to my favorite alcoholic drink, but people that are into marijuana, that marijuana leaf is everywhere. Will you explain this, Ari David, on the next episode of your show? I feel like more like Ron. When I see Ron Swanson on uh, on on Parks and Rec, I, I'm not sure how familiar you are with that show. I feel like wow, I pretty much agree with everything Ron <laughs> Swanson says. Uh, that makes me crazy. I think I don't know. I, no, I love his crazy. character. You're an individual, and individuals should be celebrated for having different opinions on I just, stuff. I just think that we're, yeah. there's a generation now, growing here's the up thing, that though. doesn't know how to change a tire or do stuff that's sure, simple. Absolutely. That's like, I mean, but this yeah, also they're not, me. they're not as my friend Sebastian Maniscalco would say in his comedy. Routine. They're not men anymore. 
Right, you know? right. Like that that Adam Carolla book, which I think is brilliant. In fifty years, we'll all be chicks. Right. That's a. Gr- I love that <laughs> exactly. book, but it's it's all about personal responsibility, and it's just that like. I, you know, I, I, I learned some basics, you know, from school, but I feel like not the things that I needed to learn to live. Yeah. Now, I feel like it, we, you get that yeah. really from your family and it's almost like they need to include a curriculum in school now of like, how to file taxes legally. Right. You know, they used how to have to that stuff entire. when I was in school. You know, they sort of home had home I took, I took right? home They class. taught us how to balance a checkbook, right. how to understand interest rates, right. how to buy and sell stock, buy low, sell high if you can, right. buy and sell real estate, and how to do taxes. Life skills. Life skills, yeah. The, yeah. It was the most important class. If all my schooling was that – I would have been. I would be so much better off today. Because you all see, you see how it's applicable. Although right. you know, it's good to know the math and science and all that. Oh, stuff. Right. Well, you need math and science, things. and you need to how to read, obviously. But no one is teaches kids basic economics, let alone home economics, let alone how to basic wash survival their, skills. Well, any of that stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah. But here, here are some questions. Because when are, when are we going to get to with the textbooks issue? When are we going to just get to that? Like all students in the United States, that we all have tablets. And that we download the latest version of a book, so it's so it's 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 you know what I mean. I just can I like, can I do, stop you right there? When are we going to be like Star Trek? Let me let me be like Piers Morgan and jump in. Okay, please, please. <laughs> when the hell are we going to stop this bullshit, fucking idiotic charade of saying we need to hire more teachers? Bullshit! You find the twenty best teachers in the country, like the twenty best rappers in the country, yeah. and you take their curriculum and you put it onto videotapes or whatever, and or their lectures, and oh you broadcast God. it to everyone. That's brilliant. Okay, okay. I notice a lot. Motherfucker. Of- College, so easy. College professors now are doing podcasts so that that like students. Right. Stanford and Heritage University are now putting their classes, their, their things on YouTube. You can just watch it. But I'm not talking college. College is whatever. Right. For kids, the, for, for mass consumer education, not high end stuff, mm-hmm. math, reading. So you, you, go to a, you go to school. You sit in an auditorium or a classroom. A screen comes down. The best teacher of whatever subject – gets beamed into every class and there's a teacher's aide in the class like a college student who's an intern helping kids learn who helps the kids learn as an expert that curriculum. And you don't have these teachers' unions and these massive budgets well, and all this other bullshit. You I, make it like music or, or videos you could, you or could, movies. You could fire all the bad teachers. Did you right. see the documentary Waiting, oh, for, God. Waiting that, for Superman? That was Waiting the for scariest was, shit, that, that movie. That blew me away, that movie. Was the Waiting worst part to me of that was the, the concept that I had not even realized. What That was – it's not that a bad neighborhood makes a bad school. A bad school will turn a good neighborhood into a slum. Yeah. Yes, that was that an is amazing, the scariest concept it's, ever. It's reverse engineering the problem, like that book right. Freakonomics or the documentary Freakonomics. Yeah, reverse engineering, like here's where, what's the causality of the the real causality of this issue. Like when the crime rate went, went down in New York in in the seventies, it was they they you mean nineties? It was was it the nineties? The yeah. right? They reverse engineered that to like, hey, that's when Roe v. Wade, uh, uh, when abortion was legal legalized right via roe v wade and and then there were less unwanted children thus less crime less criminals well i think because of that that was that's in the documentary freakonomics uh that may or may not be uh the truth and they said well it was more cops and it's like well it wasn't the cops what what actually happened in new york in the 90s was that rudy giuliani was mayor and he implemented a zero tolerance attitude towards a number of small types of crime graffitis Mm -hmm. broken windows vandalism etc the idea was called the broken windows theory that if you have a broken window in a neighborhood, it starts to blight a neighborhood and starts a – kind of like a a perpetual motion machine action that leads to further blight, further blight, further blight until like, it's finally like, a Like slump. if you got a corner of your bedroom that you've just thrown all your clothes and the socks are on the floor, well, then who cares about the pizza box? Right. And you know then I mean? who yeah, cares I if see. you urinate in the corner? Right. And who cares if you defecate yeah. in the corner? <laughs> right. And who cares if you go full Howard Hughes and have yeah. bottles of piss Don't empty everywhere? the ash. Tray, yeah, exactly. and the place looks like a disaster. Right. How can I smell more crap if it's already covered right. up by the smell of crap? Right. You know, that's yeah. the idea. So, but anyway, that's that's a correct thing. Um, but I want to going back to your point about the uh, the uh, gyms and the hiring people and this. I think there are. There's a couple points to be made from a conservative point of view that are just interesting to either talk about or have a conversation, uh, a, a realization about. You are right. 
if in the self uh, starter world of the the rugged individual, you are a hundred percent right with your attitude. But there are some corollaries. Number first corollary: Larry Bird. Do you remember what happened to him? Mm, no, no. In like the late eighties. He had that attitude, the exact attitude that you had. He had this uh, large estate in Indiana that was his like summer home, you know, mm-hmm. off-season home. And it needed uh, a driveway to be repaved. And rather than hiring people, he repaved it himself. What's wrong with that? He I wrecked his it. back. His oh, career he ended. He was in the worst oh, pain. God. So the point is – 90% of the time, you're right. But if one of those stones that you're moving is too heavy for you, yeah, right. get some help. The yeah. other thing, though, is – I do believe in hiring experts. Right. Like if someone's re- – look, I'm going to – Exactly. Gonna, you know, you're I, not going to build the rocket ship to take you to Mars. You're right. going to hire the best person to right, do it right. if you want to like, go. There's certain things in plumbing I'm actually capable of doing. And there's other things where it's like I'm going to get – Right. Gaskets hire a guy. And, gaskets and washers, yes. I'm going to hire uh, a guy. Mainline sewer replacement, no. But I have <laughs> right. gone on YouTube and I have gone on the internet and looked up videos of how to do things – because uh, anyone who's who's a homeowner will will tell you everything costs six hundred dollars. That's right. There's not everything is too expensive. To, so I I always look for what is this? Is this, am I capable of doing this myself? I've never everything I did at my home I've never done before. I just figured it out. And if I'm physically capable and it's not particularly complex, I did it. Yeah. Also done forget it. forget to, even if you're doing it yourself. If you got to hire some guy to do something, do you want to know what their job is so they can't rip you off? So you can talk their language and know what they're That's saying. That's an even better way like that's why i would always you know just i i like to know how a process works and then i can hire someone else to do it because it really is a time issue it's not yeah. so much a because you can capabilities then, issue. yeah they can t- you can tell by talking to them if they know what the hell they're doing first right. of all and number two you can tell if they're bullshitting you if yes. they're gonna charge you twenty thousand for something that costs 600 yes you know yeah. the, the other thing though and this goes to sort of the ayn rand theory of um virtuous selfishism mm-hmm. is in a way it's actually good for the spandex wearing freak on a number of levels. Number one, we get to talk about it. Right. Kills yes. ten minutes of this podcast <laughs> and, and is great entertainment. Right, right. Because he looks hilarious. <laughs> the second thing, though, is provided it's a legal immigrant and not an illegal alien, mm-hmm. it's good for someone to get a job, especially a, a starter job like that where they're willing to do the work. Right. And also, what if you have a house and you have kids and you don't have the time to do it and a 20 right. or 30 minute workout in the gym is what you can do with two kids, a, a wife, a, you know, a whole staff, a business. You know, What if that's the only uh, workout you can get in in a reasonable time frame and you're employing someone and they're getting the income and the exercise from it? Right. So in a way – Either path is good. Right. In a there, there, there are upsides to either path. For right. Sure. I, I but, would agree but with the that. downside is the Larry Bird corollary where you, yeah, wow, you do something that. that you want to do it. Oh, you're, I mean, because forget him. Think of all the pleasure all the Boston fans, who I hate, were uh. missed out on by not having the great Larry Bird be Larry Bird anymore. Wow. But it's also like, you know, in, 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 of course, on the court, he's used to pushing himself. Uh, I guess there are just certain things you can't do when it comes to concrete, right? Yeah. You can't really push yourself. No. Or oh hardwood. My God. <laughs> Oh my god! I never knew that story. That's a great story. Yeah, isn't that awful? Oh, <laughs> now you promised on the last episode to explain to me. We were talking about marijuana culture and uh, God merch. So there's all sorts of merch related to the cross, right? You can get T-shirts. You can wear a cross. You uh, can get a fish bumper sticker. Fish bumper sticker. You metal could, thing for your. You car. could get a, a Jesus bobblehead that you could put uh, in your car. So I, th- th- that kind of merch I get, but I don't get like as someone who is a uh, longtime beer drinker. I love beer, but I'm not wearing a hat. I don't have a patch on my. I don't have a bumper well, sticker with on my beer, car. They Expo- do sell that with they Jack just- Daniels. You can get a Jack Daniels t-shirt. Right, okay. I'm sure. Yeah. But, but, ex- the, but that's the what's, brand, not the substance. What's with all the marijuana leaf stuff? I don't get it. And you, you're not, you're not uh, bedazzled in. I don't see you bedazzled in anything marijuana leaf like. I mean, the, the dude t-shirt with the big Lebowski. I love that. I mean, that sort of represents. People know what that represents, which is cool. Well, even when I was uh, smoking it, I didn't want people to know I was smoking it for two reasons. Number one, I didn't want the cultural stigma stigma of thinking I might be a flaky stoner. And number two, I didn't want people to think I had good weed because then they'd want some. (laughs) So (laughs) a better reason. (laughs) Right. I, I, you know, uh, my, my conservatism slash libertarianism is quite pragmatic as Mm -hmm. you can see. Uh, I think it has to do with the same way um, a lot of people who are not communists and not genocidal maniacs wear uh, Che Guevara 
on their mm-hmm. on their shirts or mm-hmm. their like Johnny Depp or Carlos Santana. People who claim love and peace and music and da, 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 are wearing Che Guevara, murderous communist thug. Who, if he had his choice, would cut their balls off and slit their throat without even thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And they're wearing his, his, their, his image on their bodies as if it's some cool thing because the culture has made it cool. It, marijuana is the cool uh, crossover point between the straight and the, the cool culture. Doing the same with a line of cocaine on a mirror image or a heroin syringe squirting out a little bit. Yeah, but of why the... isn't there like heroin and cocaine merch? Because what I mean is, is that... because it's not cool. Understand? Well, I, yeah, okay, there, there, right. there is a cool hipness of the hophead jazz musician or the uh, you know coked up pimp or something, but it's not cool like it. In other words, if so you're you saying marijuana is cool, that's why there's so much, yes, so much merch. Yes, 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 yes. If you're if you had a teenage son, and you catch him, and I do, and, and you do, and you catch him with a joint, okay, is, there might be a stern talking to, there might be a, a talk with the wife. Yeah, we're honey, we're concerned about right. him. Um, there, there might be a call to the teacher and say, hey, uh, you know, I saw my son doing this. If you see any of this stuff in school, please let me know. There is a call to the friend's parents. There's possibly you plucking that joint out of his sock drawer and hiding it in your own sock drawer. Right. Y- you know what I mean? But if your son had heroin paraphernalia, you're calling the doctor. Right. You're calling yeah. the hospital. If it's cocaine – you might even call, be calling the police. I'd say, where'd you get that money? That's, yeah, you're, that's cocaine's right. expensive. Well, are you stealing it from me? Are you whoring yourself on the street? Are you doing that yoga thing that you talked about right. in the other episode? Yeah. Yeah, in other words, you as a parent go from zero to total freak out because right. my kid is now involved in something that could really fuck up their life. Not just – Maybe get, uh, have them get a D in the history class or something. So there's a harmlessness to it that makes it fun and playful, similar to putting Che Guevara on your image and saying, yeah, I'm against the man, man. Although, is although not- I, I do support Che Baca, which is a T-shirt that's obtainable from a friend of mine's T-shirt company. <laughs> che Baca. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> Isn't that? That's my best Chewbacca. Okay. Che Baca. Uh, <laughs> Serious, uh, but okay. I guess I get it now with the pod stuff. It's just that I, I wouldn't, I, I would be embarrassed. In other words, I feel it's like it's a private thing. Like I love vagina. Let's face it. I love a woman's vagina. I love to me. That is God. That is that is where angels sing. That is where lights and I hear. I hear a chorus. But I don't wear vagina you are T-shirts. You're such a homophobe. I I <laughs> I don't wear a vagina. By the way, t-shirt what I just said v- to you is liberalism and, because right. you're being intolerant right. of a man's anus. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. <laughs> Well, you know what? You, you know, know like as, the uh, smell and the taste of bitter. What's a, wrong with you? As a very good gay friend of mine once said, "The ass wants what the ass wants." <laughs> so, uh, in any case, uh, yeah. But I don't wear like, uh, and I think vagina is actually cool. I think vagina is yeah, cool. but you wouldn't. Parade but I wouldn't wear a wife, T-shirt. The, you wouldn't parade a picture of your wife's around town. Say, "I love this thing." Right, hey guys, look how great this thing is. But because- I might have naked pictures on my phone in a private file. For use in your own guest bathroom for, when your kids are away or asleep. Private use, <laughs> right? For, for your own private, private use, use only, right? Yes, uh, but I think the, ki- the the whole thing with kids is, is to me it's all about personal responsibility. They're not ready for it, right. frankly. Like if you if a kid's allowed to do anything, they really end up messed up. They really need structure. They need. I really they feel need like need something called parents. Well, and the, and the values of the parents. Can, can I tell you how to parent in about thirty seconds? I'll tell you everything you need to know to parent in 30 seconds. Okay. Right after I'm done saying this big build up. After I'm done building, after I'm done spewing hyperbole about how to parent in 30 seconds, uh, then I will tell you how to do it. It's so simple, it'll freak you out. If you say you're going to do something, do something. That's it. Awesome. So if you say, hey, go to bed, if you don't go to bed, the consequences are you will have the teddy bear taken away. What you do is take away the teddy bear and let them cry. Mm-hmm. Let them. Here's the thing is that I think what has um, and I feel like maybe it's just the pussification of our culture. In you general. are conservative. Let you me, let are me finish. conservative. Let me finish. The pussification of our culture in general is. Uh, I think that you have to allow a kid to fail. 
This is the one thing that my ex my ex ex wife who oh, I admire who I thought should actually have run for Congress. Uh, she's she's very right wing, very Republican. Um, I run conservative, but not as far as she goes. Uh, but um, it was the one sort of divide with us when it came to parenting. We had a couple issues, uh, but for the most part, we agreed on everything. So that wasn't a, a problem. But um, like it would be the long term project was due. Right. Two weeks, you're supposed to work on building a Lincoln log cabin out of paste sticks. This is a project that all kids do in California schools, right? They have two weeks to do it, and it takes a long time to do it. Here she – and uh, my daughter has a stomach ache because she doesn't want to go to school because she doesn't want to suffer the consequences for failing to do what she should have done. So here's my ex-wife, like making the log cabin for her – and saving her the pain. And I say, let them experience pain. It's the only way that kids learn is it feels bad to allow a long-term project to save for the night before to do a, to a piss poor job and or fail at doing it. Get the bad grade. Make it, you know, they should feel bad from getting a bad grade because then they'll go, you know what? That feels bad. I want to get I want to excel. The way to excel is to do it right, do it better. Like actually, okay, I'm going to work on it a little bit every day. And so that's a skill that needs to be learned, right? So I, I don't agree with saving. I feel like you have to let, you have to allow your kids to feel pain because that's how you learn. I, simultaneously, I will say this when it comes to religion, when you see people question religion, like how could a loving God, how could a loving God allow uh, all this pain throughout the world, right? All so much, so much pain and suffering throughout the world. Do you know why? Because pain is how you learn. Pain is how you say, I am not going to take it any, anymore. Pain is how you lift that turnip up from the ground. And you say, as God is my witness, I will never go hungry again. I'm quoting gone with the wind. Uh, with, uh, you know, Scarlett O'Hara holding, holding that she's suffering the pains of hunger and I'm not going to let this happen to me again. And she felt that pain. I think that we protect our, our, our kids too much. I think we protect, uh, members of our society from feeling pain because I don't know, out of some sort of, uh, misplaced compassion we're Pain is how you go, I don't want to have this happen to me. I want to rise from my uh, surroundings and I want to do better. And that feels good to – it feels good to, to achieve and have earned it. So That's right. And the opposite is – absolutely kills the human spirit. Correct. Destroys it. That's why when you give people welfare, why it, 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 okay, so a person may need a little help here and there, but if it becomes a lifestyle choice and they get no self-esteem or no self-worth well, the, the, the ongoing for generations, years and years. Generations, people, yeah, yeah. Right, that, and that people is, are that educated is that. in it's, public schools who are children of welfare. Don't worry, you'll be on welfare too. You don't need to learn to read and write. It's, it's, a, it's a human catastrophe because of the long term. It ends only one place. The the, uh, the, uh, the the poverty pit. I'll go. I'll go even further. I think that we should be like Israel. I think the United States should adopt where every citizen can. You have a choice. You can go into the military, or you can go into a non combat version of the military. That's sort of a, 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 a service a, role, like a service role, yeah. like a, like a you know technical support, like a, uh, facility. Yeah, support like like yeah. You're not. Yeah. You're not. You're not. You don't, but but I, I feel that we would – so if you're not going to college, you have to do this thing. And if you do this thing, you'll have college at a great discount and or free, and which would – I just think that that would strengthen our society. You okay. can't be 18 years yeah. old and, and just – you've got to serve – I mean maybe it's 18 months, okay, whatever see, it is. The liberal, see, this sounds the, horrible, the, right? No, no, no. The liberal party you just came out opposing a big government solution or having the desire for a big government solution well, I think, to solve a problem. Well, now, the problem is a problem. I agree with you and it needs to be solved. But see, this is – But I feel like they would yeah. screw that up right but, but yeah. you know how why does it work so well in israel they, they everybody different served. country different culture you, understand you so? small cohesive culture Everyone I've met it, from is israel. A, it is a jewish country that grew as a phoenix out of the ashes of the holocaust the, under the idea that the annihilation of the jews would never happen again and thus there is a cohesion to the culture ingrained the in culture israeli is, society um, they're um, like i i have met many people who've grown grown up and and there is uh i feel like that experience that two it's two years that they something must serve. like that yeah 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 in the military and i feel that it just builds a citizenship a strong it, that's why the country's so strong 
Right. Because now, every citizen yeah. is prepared. Now, here in America, the opposite would happen because, again, the law of unintended wouldn't consequences. That be, wouldn't that be like a draft? Right. Yeah, when we had the draft, what it did is it made America less assertive uh, – on foreign policy fronts under the fear that people – my children would be drafted. All, and in the way American culture works and the way we're structured in the size of our country, etc., the all-volunteer army provides the best military force. And when you look mm. at military forces, you only want to ask it one question. Is it capable of doing the best job possible that military is geared for, which is to kill other people and break their stuff when they want to kill you? But there are divisions of the military that are about uh, construction. Of, and like, of course. I mean it's just like amazing. Right. They can build a city. In, so, yeah. In, in, but, in a, but, that, a, but that again is incredible. sort of – a, a different set of arguments. The the point I would make is that if we had the strong granular unit at the, the base of our culture, families, mothers, fathers, children, so much of what government does to help people get through the next week or next month financially would be in un, totally unnecessary and obviated because kids would grow up with self-esteem. Nothing gives kids self-esteem like having a mom and a dad in the house. I'm not making the argument whether gay or straight or whatever, but two-parent families. Strong families equal strong communities. Strong communities equal prosperity for all the people who coalesce in those communities with good schools, good churches, good social services, good infrastructure and potholes, etc. When you – have the government step in to safety net everyone with the unintended effect of destroying people's human spirit and self-esteem, then you have that perpetual motion machine going in the other direction, just destroying everything over the long term. And that's, I think, the huge kind of philosophical divide. Like um, we hear all the time, politics is so divisive. Well, back 30 years ago, the, qu- the questions facing the culture and the society were less divisive. Shall we face down the Soviet Union Reagan style or Carter style? We know the Soviet Union's a threat. Um, do you want we, – we have high interest rates. Do we address that this way or that way? Now the questions facing society are much more stark. So there, it has to be divisive because there's no middle ground anymore. The questions are, do you want the government to spend more money or not spend as much money? Do you want taxes to go up or do you want taxes to go down? Do you want the government or the the country to get involved in a war to win it or to lose it? How is there any middle ground when issues are that stark? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons we have divisiveness in government and and in political culture. And there's no way around it because these are the questions that face our humanity at this juncture. Wow, you just hit the nail on a – you hit the nail on a – it's a very large nail. It's a very large <laughs> hammer you use to hit that nail. I, I, I just I, – as someone who grew up like um, uh, a Star Trek fan and a fan of NASA and worshipping the scientific and the human achievement of what NASA represents and now seeing NASA dismantled. I mean, is, aren't they selling? Is it one of, one of the, the the flight pads now being sold? Yeah. and off? I think NASA is <laughs> one. A, of the, we should be ashamed. Right, and NASA is one of those rare things that I actually support the government doing because something on that scale, government and business can both do, but government it's, does it's it better. Incredible, because on what that they, scale, the inventions, the innovations that we enjoy today, everything from crazy glue to uh, DVD technology, Velcro, to Velcro, right? yes, hook and loop tape, as it's also known. Right. Um, it's it's those came from NASA because they were presented with like, okay, we need a glue that just will hold some, an adhesive and it's got to do this. Right. Remember the been, movie uh, Apollo thirteen, oh, having a disaster yeah. and having to figure out. To solve it with only this stuff, that was and if incredible. you don't solve it, they die. Yes. That, oh my god, that movie's amazing too. Right. And there's a great. What was the uh, what was the Tom Hanks uh, series that was about uh, from the like, Earth to the from moon? the Earth to the Moon, yeah. which was incredible. Like you know where they just would do whole episodes about well we have to make this capsule and we don't know how to do it and it's got to work in space and and here they are doing these things that they did. I mean it was the complete unknown this this frontier that was undiscovered and I I, I feel um, we need to get back to that where we. We're making yeah. something and doing something where we can point to look what we achieved. I, I happened. I, I know someone who works uh, in television had the opportunity to visit NASA where they have these. I didn't know about this. They have these things with these environments where they can go to another planet and they throw out this giant container that inflates into a home. It effectively it like sh- turns into a living environment that is survivable on another planet. So they can send people now. They're they're creating technologies that will allow us to 
travel to other worlds and live on those worlds. And I, 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 I just think, when are we going to have Star yeah. Trek for real? Can I tell you what I think <laughs> the worst thing Let's about build Barack the Starship. Obama is? The very worst the okay. vision. I did a show a few weeks back. He's, you don't you think guys, he's Hitler, though. I think no, that that's no, an extremist. No. No. When I say the Hitler, no, that's and so you know stupid. what? You know where that rhetoric comes from? The Hitler thing hmm. that comes from Lyndon LaRouche and you know the, the Democrat leftist Lyndon LaRouche. Oh, His really? followers infiltrated Tea Parties in 2009. I was part of the Tea Party movement, I still am. And they would hold up those Barack Obama as Hitler signs. The media would drive by, take a picture of that, and then say that was the Tea Party. Oh my God, it was that's, a lie. First of all, brilliant. Secondly, right. that reminds me of a book. Um, right. If you've uh, there's there's a great book I would recommend. Have you ever heard a book called Trust Me, I'm Lying? No. It's written by a guy. I forget his name. He was the uh, publicist for American Apparel. Um, uh, the the clothing brand right. and just talks about how he lied to blogs how he would just make something up they call it make news where he would just like he would have a billboard from American Apparel that would be like uh, that they could barely afford because they had no marketing budget. He would deface the billboard and then take pictures of it and go, look what they did. They defaced our billboard. Then that billboard would be on on, on fashion right. websites that yeah. would get tens of millions of views, thus advertising American Apparel. So this guy comes clean about all of the things he did right. to manipulate that's, blogs. That's, that's what, Brilliant that's what, book. That's what conservatives talk about when we talk about Alinsky tactics. Right. Alinsky taught uh, people that kind of stuff. And and. Uh, the point I want to make about what you just said about NASA and all that is I did a show a few weeks back about Obama's bleak vision, and I think this is the worst thing about him. JFK – I'm not a fan of JFK, but JFK said before the decade is out, we will put a man on the moon with this kind of precision, with this yeah. kind of engineering. I don't know how it's going to happen. I challenge you as a country to do it because I know you can. And people yeah. reacted by saying, but we have problems at home. He said, I don't care. Well, if we don't have problems at home, when would we go? Yeah, There's always we always have problems, problems at home. At home. Obama said, I will not rest if one child goes hungry. I will not rest if one person doesn't have the job they have. I will not rest and fill in the blank. Has he but, seen but here's how my fat point. people here's my are point. these here's days? My point. Like... Here's my point. The things he's outlined are such a bleak vision for our country. One child out of 300 – there's going to be someone going to bed hungry out of 300 million. As Reagan said, they're probably on a diet. There's going to be <laughs> one person who doesn't have the job they want. Example, the entertainment industry, they're not good at the role. <laughs> we had to fire them. In, in other words, it's such penny ante bullshit stuff. And as a result, people who listen to him f- lose the great vision that humanity could have, looking up at the stars going, what else is there? What worlds can we go to? How do we get there? What is, what's I, out I there? I guess there's no long-term vision when it, it comes to politics. Now it's uh, minor achievable goals and winning – uh, but over – which is defeating the other party, not so much winning for us as a culture. Well, there, so like there is, I, I feel like those, yeah. those wins are not wins. They're like right. – and so Be, what? Like, for the establishment of both parties, there is. But there is this movement called the Tea Party, which wants to return to constitutional could, conservatism. And the constitution is the basis that got us to where we are and will be the basis to get us other places could, for at all time. I just feel I would love to see a politician say after 9-11 because it's, I, I feel like – we, we are in some way, as radical as this to say, we're in some way responsible for the anger towards the United States. There is an anger towards us. There's a reason that countries in the Middle East are pissed off at us. Uh, I, I think we're partially responsible. I think that their own How government – Wait a second. With, sh- you giving wait them all that money for all the oil and, we bought? their own governments are responsible by uh, deflecting attention away from themselves, making America the great evil – yeah, the, the complex issue, but it would would have been nice if someone said, you know, we're going to be energy, energy independent in the next decade. In ten years, we will we're not going to be sucking off the teat of these other countries and basically arming via via right. via our dollars. Um, you know, there's a, there's a reason that that there are a lot of uh, rich people in those cultures that are able to arm themselves. Right, and because we're giving them those, the money. Because yeah. we're giving them the money. It's it's sif- it's being siphoned out of our country and I am I, I am a, a proud patriot. I, I'm I, I'm and, and definitely um uh, an American who believes that we can do anything and I agree that there has not been where is that person with that the big goal? Yeah, the, the big vision. The big vision. Um, Well, it's you and me in this room, Chris. You and me. 
Well, that's it for this week's Crash. I really want to thank Ari David for having me on his show. Uh, I came in to record a couple episodes. Uh, he had me on four of them, and, and uh, we couldn't stop talking it even in between the episodes when we took breaks. I mean, it was just this sort of really interesting political discussion that I think um, – uh, I, I think w- while we disagreed in a bunch of areas, I think uh, I think each of us had respect for the other one's other person's view, and I think that that's um, I don't know. I, some other people should try that. Some people who have the actual jobs that uh, in the the realm of politics, you know, who knows? They might actually get something done. Which, uh, uh, yeah, hmm. it can be incredibly frustrating uh, keeping up with. Uh, all the goings on uh, in, in Washington. Um, it'd be nice if they actually did something for a change. Um, but you can get more information about Ari David by uh, go to his website, aridavid.us. Okay, you, that dot us. That's actually pretty cool. Um, and you can also follow him uh, on Twitter at Ari David USA. Uh, uh, gr- great discussion. Great po- podcast about politics. Always fun. And uh, I appreciate uh, that you had me on the show. Uh, and I want to thank you for continuing to listen to PodCrash. You can, you can follow me at that Chris Gore. You can follow the show at PodCrash Show, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Go to PodCrash.net for more. Uh, and also go to iTunes. Give us a review. Five stars if you think we deserve it. Uh, really, really appreciate the support. And I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody at Phoenix Comic Con uh, Memorial Day weekend. That is going to be a blast. Put that one on your calendar. And uh, one final thing let's get out of here. You're either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I can do those things because I'm not a hero. I like dead. Hey, if you're still listening to this, you're probably a lot like me. You're the kind of person who gets really frustrated with politics. And if that's how you feel, you and I are a lot alike, and I like you. And for that, you shall be rewarded. Send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Podcrash with that Chris Gore, 5042 Wilshire Boulevard, PMB 1500, Los Angeles, California, 90036. You'll receive in the mail the free Podcrash fan club kit. It's absolutely free. You don't even need to be part of any political party. Actually, you can be part of any political party. I don't care. Sure, Republicans, Democrats, everybody. Liberals, Libertarians, right wing. I don't care. I don't care. Gun owners, non-gun owners, pot smokers, non-pot smokers. Everyone will get the free Podcrash fan club kit. All you need to do is send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. Later. <laughs>